What's up, everybody? Welcome to another PGA 2K23 preview video. And this is the video I know a lot of you have been waiting for. I've had a lot of questions on this and how my player works, as this is definitely the biggest change from PGA Tour 2K21 to 23. It's the my player, the archetypes, the skills, the fittings and the equipment and how they are all interrelated. This is going to take a little bit of time to explain how they're interconnected. I have have a limited time with this build, so I have not been able to really fully test how much of an influence these archetypes and builds and fittings have. I'm just going to give you the information so you can see what you're going to be dealing with on October 11th or 14th with 2K23. So again, if you like this content, please make sure to like and subscribe. Always helps me. Helps me very, very much. Let's dive in. Here is the My Player screen. We are going to focus primarily on how you are affected on the golf course. We are going to save apparel, more cosmetic stuff. We're going to save that for a future video. I want to focus on how you are being helped on the course. We are going to start by talking about archetypes. So you're going to access the archetype screen by hitting that golfer menu and scrolling over to archetypes. All right, you might be wondering why is he starting with archetypes when I'm really interested to hear about the skills. We got to talk about the archetypes before we talk about the skills, because you need to consider the archetypes as basically like the base build of your golfer. The skills and the fittings that you apply to your clubs will affect these stats, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. There are five archetypes in PGA Tour 2K23, and the nice thing about them is you can switch them out whenever you want, okay? Not in the middle of rounds, but between rounds, you can switch these out. So you do not have to get locked into one. Also, there is no way with skills and archetypes and fittings and all that, that you can create a 99 overall golfer with every 99 stats. That is absolutely impossible. You, with every single archetype and build, you are going to get positives, but you are also going to get negatives. So there is no way you're going to be able to build this ultra 99 everything golfer. So don't worry about that. It's finding the right balance and what fits your game. And again, like we said, I have not, like I said, I have not spent enough time with all of these builds to really, I can't really tell which is my favorite yet and really how much of an influence this is going to have on your game. It definitely does, but how big of an impact it is, that is still a big unknown. Anyway, the five archetypes, let's start with the greensman archetype. As expected, the greensman archetype, that's the putting specialist. So they have the high putt path and putt weight attribute. I will talk about what all these attributes mean shortly. Shortly. Their weakness, they're not very good at recovery shots. The powerhouse build is the second build. I can imagine everyone is going to be clamoring to this one right away, but it does have a very big weakness and that is swing difficulty. So obviously you get that big carry distance, but the swing timing and swing path are not good at all with the base build. The rhythm archetype is essentially the opposite of the powerhouse build. Excellent timing and swing path, but you're getting that very, very low power number. The sculptor build is an interesting one. It is for draws, fades, but also spinning the ball. So it's very good at shaping your shots and spinning, but distance control is the real weakness. And as you can see, the putt path is really not great with Sculptor either. And finally, we have the Woodsman build, which to me kind of seems like the more balanced build, the more all around build that I can tell. Uh, they're really great with recovery shots. Uh, but putting is definitely a weakness here. But in terms of things outside of putting, this seems to be the more balanced build from what I can tell. All right, let's look at the base stats and what they mean here. So I'm going to bring up the health menu and we're going to go through these. The power, obviously we know what the power is. That is the maximum carry distance and spin for your shot, not counting putts. Timing is the forgiveness window of the hook and slice. And my understanding of that is those are kind of like the red fast and the red slow from 2K21. That changes the size of those windows. Swing path 
is the push-pull forgiveness. So that's going to change the size of the gray fast and gray slow windows. Transition is purely tempo based, a backswing to downswing. The bigger this is, the easier you're going to get that perfect tempo. So transition, probably a very, very important skill to consider. Shaping, draw, fade and spinning as well. So the higher that is, the more you're able to shape the ball as well as the more effectively you're able to spin the ball. Lie range is a really interesting one. If you remember from 2K21, you would get, you know, you get a heavy rough lie and you might get anything from like a 60 to a 68% lie, for example. The higher the lie range, the more dialed in that range becomes. So if you have a higher lie range, maybe it's only 60 to 63. So you're able to really dial in your distance a little bit more with a higher lie range skill. Putt path is the push pull forgiveness when putting. That's pretty straightforward. And putt weight is the tempo with putting, how hard it is to get that dialed right in. So hopefully that makes sense. Those are the different skills, set of clubs, and how each archetype is affected distance-wise, because I'm sure people are wondering, well, how far do these clubs go? Well, let's take a look at some stock clubs and see how far each archetype is going. Okay, so we're going to start from lowest to highest in terms of distance. And we're going to start with the rhythm archetype, the high swing path, but the very, very low distance. It's only about a 60 overall, but still, even with a 60 overall, that driver's going 274 yards. So I have a basic bag here. We, you can swap out the clubs to be hybrids or whatever you want. We'll talk about that a little bit more a bit later in the video, but this is just a basic set. No fittings or anything attached to the club. Clubs, and here's the distance for a basic rhythm archetype. Next up, we have the Greensman archetype, the cutting focused archetype, and it has a 64 overall power. And you, you can see the drivers going four yards further at 278. So here are the distances for a stock Greensman build. Next up is the Woodsman build, which I was more the recovery kind of all around build. It has a power stat of 70 as the base, and there is the driver at 282. And here are the rest of the clubs for a stock Woodsman build. And next we have the Sculptor build. So the draw, fade, spin build has a 73 overall power, and you have the driver Topping out at 284. Here are the rest of the clubs for the Sculptor build. And finally, we have the Powerhouse build. Topping out with 81 power. I guess I shouldn't say topping out. Starting at 81 power. And you already have a 291 yard driver in the bag. Here are the rest of the clubs for a stock Powerhouse build. All right, hopefully I have done a decent job of explaining how archetypes work. Again, those are just the base stats for your golfer. Now let's talk a little bit about how you can change those base stats. And you can do them through two different ways. You can do them through skills and you can do them through fittings. So let's start by talking about skills, which I think was probably the most intriguing screen on the trailer. A lot of people had questions with how these work and how you incorporate them into your golfer. I'm going to do my very best to explain how these work and the influence these have over your golfer again it's and how big it is i'm really not sure i haven't had enough time to really dive into it but it is a very very intriguing system so let's try to break this down so you will earn skill points as you level up you will start with one as you can see in the top right hand corner i currently have seven right now because i'm a level seven you will earn these points up to a maximum of 50 points total. As you can see, there are a lot of skills and each one of these skills has three different levels to them. So therefore, it is impossible for you to have every skill unlocked. So you are going to really need to pick and choose what is important to you. There are six different categories of skills, driver, wood, hybrid, iron, wedge, and putter. And there are seven different tiers. So every four points, you will unlock a new tier. Actually, every three points, you'll unlock a new tier. So at 24, you will have that last tier unlocked. So what 
what do these skills do? Well, they will turn on and off depending on how well you play. Some of them are passive. The higher tier ones will be on all the time. So let's take a look at each individual skill and just kind of break down what they are. There's three different categories before we jump in. There are support skills. Those are skills that are meant to kind of help you out if you're struggling and will give you a little bit of a boost. There are momentum skills, which essentially do the opposite. If you're playing well, those skills will activate and they will turn off if you do something not so great. And then the passive skills are on the entire time. So I want to go through what each of the skills are. I'll give you, I'll show you what they each are. And then I will do a build with the seven points that I have. Like I said, I haven't played this a ton. I have a very limited time to play it. So, but I will try to show you how I could spread out these seven points. So let's start with the driver. As you can see, the very first level one skill is the trailblazer skill. And this is any normal shot will receive a swing path boost off the tee. And if you look down below, there are three levels there. So if you miss three fairways in a row, that will activate and it will deactivate if you hit one fairway in regulation. So this is definitely a support skill. So if you're struggling, you get that swing path boost off the tee. Next one over is your fairways in regulation finder. So this is a momentum booster. So normal shots will receive a shaping boost. So they'll receive a general boost. It doesn't tell you how many points of a boost. It just tells you a boost. Okay. So this is basically an opposite of a trailblazer. A tier three one is a tee time. So that is the timing boost off the tee. So if you have poor timing four times for level one, this is clearly a support level skill. Off the deck will give you a lie range boost. So good swing timing. This is a momentum skill. Aerodynamics gives you a flight boost off the tee. And this activates hitting into a headwind of 15 miles an hour or greater. So for headwind, this is pretty cool. Uh, so this is definitely a support skill. And then T and crush it's gives you the power boost off the tee. So if you bomb on 325 yards, and these you can see the distance lowers depending on the higher the level. And then finally, you have take the wheel, which is the final level passive stat. And these are always active. If you have a level one, you get a general transition boost all the time. Level two, it's a swing pass booth and level three, it's a timing boost. So if you have that powerhouse build, for example, having take the wheel and leveling that up to get a timing boost off the tee or a swing pack path boost off the tee would be extremely beneficial. Let's go down to the woods. The woods have a level one of off grid is a lie range boost. So missing four fairways, this is a support one. So it looks like here the level, every odd leveled one is a support boost and every even leveled one seems to be a momentum boost. So we have range finder, okay, hitting fairways and regulation again. At it close has sw is for power boost for poor swing timing. So you really need to look through each of these ones to really see which works for you. There's a lot here. Human metronome, timing boost. The greatest is a shaping boost, missing four greens, so a support one, obviously. Momentum, you get that swing path boost for scoring a birdie or better four times. So there's lots of different activation points for turning these off and on, activation and deactivation. And then you have Forester for transition, swing path, and timing. So you get those for all of them, uh, but we'll break down those skills here in a second. Uh, the hybrid ones, these are good if you're a hybrid player, but if you're not a hybrid player, I wouldn't focus on these at all. Gusto, you get a flight boost. Normal shots here, you receive a spin boost from the fairway. Survivor, you get a timing boost from the heavy rough. Unorthodox, you get a power boost from the bunker. So very random ones here with hybrid. Here you get a lie range from heavy rough. I think that would be if you get into trouble, that's a big, big one, is that will really decrease your percentage. Migration, a swing path boost from the fairway, and then in between is a transition swing path or timing boost. So in very interesting ones for, for hybrid. Irons have the Agristologist, which is a lie boost, lie boost for scoring bogey or worse. Calculator, pitch shots receive a shaping boost, so this is landing it within certain distances from the pin. 
Beach Bomb or another swing timing one, so you get a timing boost. Too Breezy, normal shots receive a flight boost from the fairway. Let's roll. You get a roll boost from the heavy rough. What a roll boost is, I'm not sure. Maybe how far it rolls in the fairway? I don't know. That's a different one. Uh, this is a power boost from the fairway, blacksmith. And then you have the metal head. Lots to digest here. I could see people working on different builds and things like that quite a bit in this menu. So uh, there is a lot to break down here. Uh, with the wedges, we have Arenologist. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Uh, splash shots receiving a timing boost uh, for poor swing timing. Perfect pitch, you get a spin boost within 101 yards. I'm not sure why they didn't decide it being 100 yards, but 101 yards for birdies, it looks like. Bump and run, you get a roll boost. But again, what that roll boost means, I'm not 100% sure yet. I haven't really had a chance to dive in. Does that mean it rolls further? Is it more of a controlled roll? I don't know. Dialed in, chip shots receive a timing boost within 26 yards of the green. That I think would be a really good one because what I'm gonna be showing you guys in a few days the short game is a lot more difficult from what I'm gathering, so it's it, that might be a good one. Uh, Floptastic, shaping boost from the heavy rough. Double major is a power boost from the fairway. And then the passive one is the higher degree. And then finally, putter, the level one is a zen garden. You get a putt path boost for missing short putts. Short stuff, another putt path boost for making putts. Here's a putt weight from missing kind of medium length putts. Goal weight is a momentum one for medium putts. You can see a pattern here. Uh, roll boost on the green, missing two greens in regulation in a row. And then easy reads, landing within two meters of the green. So a putt path boost on the green. This one I think would be a pretty important one too, I would imagine. And then you have the four dough, a roll putt weight or putt path boost on the the green. So there are your different stats. So I'm going to show you kind of how a build might work. I only have seven points to play with. So for me, I mean, I, I would like to probably if I'm a power guy, let's say I'm a power guy, for example, I will probably have at least a level one there for my driver. I could max this up to the max level, but I don't have to. I could go down and change this. to. So as you can see, if you look in the top here, the points have gone down from four to three. So all I have to do is spread out the three points anywhere within the skills. So let's say iron, for example. And hey, maybe I want to do two iron levels here. OK, and then we'll do one more, let's say putter. And now I have unlocked that second tier of skills. All right. So there, if you look in the on the right, hold to reset skills, it is another 500 VC. So thankfully, those do not increase depending on how many times you reset your skill points. 500 VC is not hard to earn. So you can pretty much change these at will whenever you want, which is awesome. Again, you can play with this however you want. So you could have a level, you couldn't have a tier, you don't have to have a tier one skill and you can have a tier two skill instead. And let's say maybe I wanted this range finder. All right, so that is how skills work. This is a very, very interesting menu. Again, how it really, really works and affects your play. That's still a big question mark for me anyway, as I just haven't had enough time to really dive in and play a bunch of rounds and test a bunch of things out. But I know some people are really going to be checking these out and trying to find some awesome builds. So I can't wait to check those, those things out, those videos out. I'm sure people are going to be making those. So really, really cool with the skills. Now let's get into the other big factor that will affect base skills, and that is your fittings. All right, so before we talk about fittings, I want to highlight a huge change here with 2K21, and it has to do with the equipment. As you can see here, we just have a basic screen. I haven't unlocked too many in terms of drivers, for example, or irons or whatever. But if you look here with the Cobra driver, there are no stats whatsoever attached to it. That means all equipment is purely cosmetic. So there's no magical Bridgestone driver that goes 296 yards like there did in 2K21. You can tailor any club you want of any brand to do anything you want based on the fittings you have attached to the club. So again, the brand does not matter. It all has to do with the fittings. 
All right, so here we are at the fitting screen and fittings are more of a permanent boost to your golfer stats depending on the club. So there are fittings for all the different types of clubs, just like the skills, the driver, the woods, the irons, the wedges, the putter, all those things. And there are fittings for all of them. And the rarities are different. So as you can see, there are common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary fittings. Fittings are only earned through playing the game. You cannot buy fittings. You only unlock fittings while playing the game, and it happens at random. So it's almost like a loot drop, but you, there's not really anything like that. It's just a random drop at the end of a round. Now, if you play a career mode round, you earn far more rewards. In addition to a fitting or maybe two, you're also going to pick up some VC. You may pick up a few other goodies as well. I will show you more on this in the career mode video coming up very soon. But you only earn fittings through playing rounds. You earn more through career mode. You still can earn fittings based on just playing regular casual rounds as well. But they come at random. Sometimes you might play and you may get an uncommon putter fitting. Sometimes you may get a legendary fitting. It really depends on what you get. It's completely random. Now, you can put three three different fittings on each club. You can do, there's a fitting for the head, a fitting for the shaft, and a fitting for the grip. And they will have boosts based on those certain stats again. So this, for example, I have highlighted is a driver head that is more timing based. So this gives me a plus seven timing, but it also gives me a plus six swing path, plus one transition, plus six shaping, plus one lie range. So as you can see on the far right, that has now changed my base stats for my driver only. So again, there are going to be fittings for all the different types of clubs. And to attach them to the clubs, there is a fit fee, as you see below. The more rare the fitting, the higher the fit fee. The fit fees, I don't think, are going to be a big deal. I mean, I have... I, I If you look in the top right, I don't have a lot of VC, mostly because I've been playing around a lot. It doesn't take long to accumulate a lot of VC. But you can't just spend it all willy-nilly, so you really got to think about where you want to spend that VC. So... You can attach and reattach and play around, but just know that each time you want to attach a new fitting, it will cost you a certain fee. So for these are epic fittings that I've unlocked so far. They're 125. Uh, this is a 50. I believe this is a rare. And then these are common or uncommon. I think they're common, so they're only 25. Now, as you can see, so this is a timing one. Here's one for my wedge. And you can choose to fit it to one wedge or all of your wedges. If you, if you attach it to all of your wedges, it will cost per club. So remember that this one is a plus nine transition but it also gives you a minus two swing path so so many things to play with here here's one for hybrid ahead it's a lie range okay there are no limits to how many fittings you can put on you can have everything maxed out for all your clubs but it does take a while to get those fittings from what i'm seeing every round at least maybe every two rounds a fitting will drop OK, and you can do certain things with the fittings as well. That's pretty neat. So if you were to select this driver head fitting, okay, you can fit it, of course. You could also deconstruct it or VC or the neat thing is you can exchange it. So if you can want to exchange things, OK, so if you select three fittings of the same rarity to trade, OK, you can either exchange them or update them. OK, if you exchange them, you reward a custom fitting for the same rarity that you specify attributes for. So you can choose which attribute you want and get that exact fitting. So if you're having trouble, oh, I really need this fitting. If you exchange three other ones you're not using, you can get that one you want. Upgrading is what it sounds like. If you exchange three epic ones, you can get one legendary one. So that's how exchanging works. And I think that is a really, really neat aspect there. So those are fittings. And like I said, they change your stats based on your club. So your golfer will have very different stats depending on what skills they have turned on and off during the game and what fittings they have on what clubs. 
no two golfers are going to be the same. And I think that is a really neat and exciting part about this game. All right, I'm now into the pro shop. I'm not going to, again, I said I wasn't going to do it too much on cosmetic stuff, but I do want to look at some of the equipment. Again, these are purely cosmetic, but I'm sure you guys want to see what's there. And we have uh, obviously the TaylorMade Sim Driver, which was there last time. We've got a Mizuno, Titleist TS2, the Callaway TS3. You got some 2K drivers, very similar ones to last year. These are not all the drivers, okay? You will unlock new drivers based on completing sponsors, so sponsorship contracts in career mode, and also through the clubhouse pass. So these are not even close to all the different clubs you can get, but these are a few. I haven't discovered all of them yet, but here's some tailor-made stealth woods that are already there. Um, there is a whole bunch. Some regular golf club brand as well, Titleist. Hybrids, again, these are not all of them. You will earn others by again, completing sponsorships or just unlocking them in the game or through the clubhouse pass. So there's lots of ways to unlock certain things. There's lots to play for. I don't think you'll ever, there's lots of stuff to unlock. So a whole bunch here as well. So it looks like actually the three iron is only in the 2K. I just noticed that. It looks like all the other base sets have the four, only the four iron. I don't remember if that was the same or not in, uh, in 21 or not, but just something I noticed. Here's a few of the wedges, Zuno. So a few new ones, a few old reliable ones that we know, but uh, overall the equipment pretty cool. And we got the putter. We got obviously a few cosmetic putters here, always fun. And we got this tailor-made Scotty Camerons as well. And a few Mizuno, Wilsons, things like that. And golf balls. We need to talk about golf balls because I know everybody is worried about consumable golf ball sleeves. Again, the golf balls, the look is purely cosmetic, okay? But your golf balls are consumable. So what that means is every time a round finishes, you lose a ball, okay? You do not lose a ball for putting it in the water, okay? You could put it in the water 40 times, you don't lose a ball. You just lose a ball at the end of the round, okay? Balls have stats as well, and I'm gonna show you here. All right, we are back into the golf bag, and I wanna show you how golf balls work. As you can see, I have the default ball currently, and golf balls have their own stats, separate from your player stats. You have spin, flight, bounce, and roll. We talked about these briefly, as these are some skills that can get turned on and off uh, in the game. I am a little bit unclear on exactly what those stats do. I'm having trouble locating it in the menus at all exactly what they do but i'm sure we will figure it out at some point but the default pack has these certain attributes so if i want to change my ball type again ball appearance is just cosmetic but ball type this is where the discussion of the consumable golf balls and everyone was worrying about how these consumable golf balls are going to affect it is it going to be pay to play blah 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 Here's what I think, and here's what I've seen. So you will earn golf balls just by playing rounds. Again, they're just like drops. So in, in addition to fittings and things that can drop after a round, golf club packs can, golf ball packs can drop as well. So as you can see down here, I have received some uncommon, or some, sorry, some common golf balls. And it looks like they're into four categories. So it looks like there's a friction ball. So that seems to influence bounce the most and spin, but not great on flight and roll there's aviator balls good for flight and bounce not great for spin and roll red line balls and magnet balls and they are varying tiers so obviously the legendary tiers are going to have some really really big effects what i am seeing is yes there are probably if you want to be really competitive you're probably going to be wanting to stock up on these legendary golf balls okay but in order to refill these yes you will have to pay purchase them with vc this is not a lot of vc though honestly like i said you play through you'll earn this pretty quickly but again you have to be careful is there going to be one ball that's dominant i don't know you people are going to have to really test and see 
but you really have to be careful. So maybe if you're not playing non-competitive rounds, you might just want to load up a default ball or a ball you're not using as much so you can save those other golf balls. I don't love this, to be honest. I think a lot of people were a little eh, not sure, and I was a bit hesitant too. Now that I see it, I'm still a bit hesitant on how this is going to work. I don't think 2K is out to and going to make thousands and thousands of dollars off people buying golf balls. I think the people that are serious serious enough about this game are just going to play the game enough that they're going to earn so much VC that it's not even going to matter. But just keep it in mind that golf balls are consumable and they do cost VC. So this is really the one part that again, even after having it for a little bit, I'm I'm not sure how this is going to fully work. It's not going to sink the game at all by any means, but it's just an extra wrinkle to be aware of. All right, everybody, that about covers it in terms of archetypes, skills, fittings, golf balls, clubs. Hopefully I explained this as clearly as... I possibly could have. I tried to. Uh, please leave your comments and suggestions down below. I appreciate you guys sticking around and maybe hopefully sticking with this entire video. Thank you so, so much for watching, and we will see you tomorrow with some more 2K23 content.